Okay, today I am uh, <coughs> working on my 1996 Sea-Doo SPX. I'm going to be removing the carburetor. Uh, this is a uh, 787 uh, Rotax engine. It's a little bigger than uh, what I've got on my other machines. And everything's a little bit tighter fit as well. You know, it's a little hard to see in there because of the contrasting uh, lighting conditions. But um, I'm going to be taking this uh, box off here. This is actually <laughs> when I first started doing these things. One of the trickier things to do. I wasn't even, even sure how to do this, but that slides off <coughs> with a little effort. And I've already pulled a couple of them off. But you s slide that piece out, and then the whole thing goes along with it, if you're lucky. Kind of hard to do with one hand. There we go. Now, like I said, I've got the other uh, piece of off already, and sometimes it's easy -er to work from one side of the engine. But uh, yeah, this whole cover here just pops right off. Sometimes a little screwdriver helps to get things moving. Okay, and then, like I said, everything's kind of a tight fit, so something that I found was a little rather tricky was just getting this thing off. Slide, slides out the back pretty good. Okay, so from here, I've already worked on loosening some bolts, but you've got a, a metal framework that's got uh, six bolts holding it together. And like I said, I don't know if you can see this or not. It's a tighter fit than the other ones. It's a little harder to work in. But taking uh, bolts off here, obviously I've al already loosened these up and removed a few of them. Okay, that comes out. Then this piece, which is also a little bit tricky, slide that up, and then it slides out the back. Again, another piece that I've already loosened up a bit. Okay, from here, I'm going to pop off <clears throat> this uh, metal cover. I think they call this the, uh, uh, it's like a flame resistor screen or something. Arrest flames if it backfires. With a little bit of prying, I've managed to loosen up this screen. And uh, it's not supposed to be dented like that. So not sure what happened here. Try not to drop things down into the engine compartment. They're almost impossible to get back. Yeah, maybe it's designed that way, I don't know. Looks a little dirty too. Might need to clean that up, but I don't think it's supposed to be bent like that. Okay, so... With the camera, I can probably see into the carburetor, even though I can't from outside of it. But there's uh, four, I think there's this four bolts here. Pull this off, and then I can further get to uh, the rest of the carburetor. So that's my next step. Uh, with the uh, last bolt out, uh, metal cover comes right on out. Now we've got a uh, 
better look at our carburetors here and um, I'm going to keep dismantling pull the whole carburetor system off and clean it out because the um, fuel filter was so filthy dirty and I've got old fuel lines here I'm gonna replace all of those too uh, I'm just afraid something catastrophic is gonna happen in the not too distant future like it did to one of my others um, so I'm gonna keep uh, keep pulling things apart here I got four bolts I'm gonna take those off next and the carburetor should be pretty free except for cables and fuel lines and things like that um, that'd be a good idea to start uh, taking those off too yeah I'm just taking a look here at things trying to figure out how to best proceed um, I got a fuel line here I think I'll take that off first this is my uh, choke uh, obviously I want to undo that as well and I believe this is my throttle cable here. Some, some things are easier to undo once you get it out. Uh, like some of these cables are a little easier to work on um, when it's out of the uh, engine compartment here. So I had fuel line here, just unscrewed the clamp, pulled it off, no brainer. Um, best to uh, either put a hose clamp on there or at least keep it above the end of it above the fuel tank so it doesn't uh, siphon all your fuel out and make a big giant mess and for now I'm just gonna leave that like that and I think from here I'm gonna take off uh, these four bolts that hold the carburetor on and then I think I'll work on the um, throttle and choke cables I think I might add be extremely uh, I'm trying to be extremely cautious as to not drop anything down in there because if it gets under the engine compartment or under the engine I should say it's darn near impossible to get it back without removing the entire engine it can be done but it is a real time-consuming task I'm making uh, pretty good progress here got the uh, four main bolts that hold the carburetors into place got that released the only thing holding uh, holding me up right now um, I've got a couple of lines and cables that I'm gonna need to uh, deal with um, you can see uh, this is my my throttle cable here it's important that everything remains synchronized uh, I've got my choke up there this is what I decided to do on the oil injector uh, cable. Um, I loosened up the inside nut here so that I can slide this back and then this whole cable can come out here. Then I can fiddle around with this part here to release the whole cable from the unit. So that's my next task. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this uh, last little uh, removal of the throttle cable with one hand just uh, to show how it's pretty easy to get back into place and the cable just comes right through a little uh, little notch here on the end and it's loose it's free okay choke cable then I'll bring it in the house well, I'm going to find out later if uh, this was the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do for uh, the um, choke cable removal. I just decided to undo those two nuts and leave this as it is so that these uh, remain where they are and somewhat synchronized when I put things back together. So. I got everything uh, apart here. <coughs> I can uh, <coughs> take my carburetor inside and dismantle it some more and get it cleaned up.